As you watch this teaching, please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see this message. Welcome to today's program. I've been waiting all weekend to get back here to be with you. And we're going to continue the brand new series we started last week, which is called The Point of No Return. Eventually, every one of us comes to a point when we have to say, all right, Lord, I'm going to do what you've asked me to do. And when you step out to do it, often you feel panicked. You might feel an earthquake in the pit of your stomach because you're doing something you've never done before. This is the big moment. And now there's no turning back. And believe me, friends, I have been there many times in my life and I will face it again. Because as long as you obey God, he's calling you to do something new, to break into new territory, and you will face the point of no return over and over and over. But the reason I'm teaching this series is because I want to help you pass the point of no return. And that's why I want you to order the new series called The Point of No Return, tackling your next new assignment with courage and common sense. It's good to have courage, but you need to have common sense too. And when you have courage and common sense combined, wow, what a mixture that is for victory. This is 10 parts and it comes with a great study guide. And right now we're offering you the book by the same title. I've been teaching from this book last week. I'll continue this week. The Point of No Return. The back of the book says, Adventure Beyond Anything You've Ever Imagined Awaits You. That's my testimony. If Denise and I had not said yes to the call of God and passed the point of no return, we would have missed so much that God had waiting for us. When I think about the fact that I could have said no, I can't even imagine if I had not experienced everything we've experienced in our walk of faith. And I understand that when you say yes, it seems a little scary. Tomorrow, we're going to see what it's like when you begin to cross the Jordan River for the first time. But on the other side of the Jordan lies adventure beyond your wildest imagination. Anyway, order these products. And at the end of the program today, my announcer is going to tell you how you can order these and even more things. But I'll be back in just a moment, and we're going to get started. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire strengthen and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Hey, if you need prayer, reach out to us. We're here to pray for you. Just call us or send us an email or a letter. And the moment we hear from you, we're going to release our faith and Jesus is really going to do something spectacular for you. But reach for your Bible. We always use the Bible in this program. And today we're going to return to Joshua chapter 1. So let's go there. And I'm reading from my book, beginning on page 90, The Point of No Return. In Joshua 1-2, God continued speaking to Joshua and said, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise. Now that is amazing because the moment finally came when Joshua had to step into the spotlight. And I'm sure that when he stepped into the spotlight, there were people who said, wow, what an amazing success story. He just appeared out of nowhere. And often I hear believers say that very thing, and I'm reading from my book. They say, wow, that person has really skyrocketed fast. Or they may say, isn't it amazing how quickly his or her ministry has gained national prominence, yet... If those people were to really get close to those people they're talking about and ask them how their ministry developed, they'd find out there was absolutely nothing instant about their success. Most of those ministers have been around a long, long time working hard at their ministry for many years, and it just so happens they were recently promoted by God, and that's why you think they are an instant success. But if you talk to them, there were years and years and years of working behind the scenes when no one knowed them, knew them and no one paid attention to them. But the moment came when God said, arise. Wow. Promotion usually comes after years of learning submission, 
faithfulness and hard work. And normally the new leader who seems to step out of nowhere actually came up through the ranks, putting in long hours over a long period of time. And after years of diligence, he finally attains this position of influence with authority and he earned it through the sweat of his brow. I can say that about my own life. And I have many friends in the ministry. And I can tell you the people that are nationally known, they served for years and years and years dreaming of the time when the spotlight would shift so they would have a larger voice. And God was watching them for all of those years. And God is watching you. And the truth is, it's good that there are few instant successes because most people who attain instant success are not able to maintain it because they don't have the character to maintain it. But during all the years of preparation, God is building character into us. I realize most of us have our eyes on the clock thinking, ah, oh, Time is passing. When's it ever going to happen? When am I going to pass the point of no return? When is my dream going to come to pass? We have our eyes on the clock. But hey, friend, God has lots of time. God is never looking at the clock. Then what does God look at? God is a character watcher. We tend to be a clock watcher, but God is looking for character. And we do not attain that position we want until God knows that our character is is ready for it. So use this time of preparation to work on your character. Listen to this. Promotion again usually comes after years of diligence. Finally, you maintain a position of influence and you earn it through the sweat of your brow. Well, let's go back to the example of Joshua. To some of the Israelites, it may have seemed like Joshua stepped out of nowhere onto center stage. A few may have even thought he was an incredible overnight success. But if you look closely at Joshua's life, you'll find that he had been around a long, long time before he was promoted into a highly visible position. For 40 years, he had served as Moses' minister, Moses' assistant, Moses' companion, Moses' disciple, even Moses' slave, doing menial tasks I'm sure that sometimes he thought they were tasks that were below him, but he did them and he did them faithfully and God was watching. So to say Joshua was an instant success would be a great misjudgment. And I have found in life there are very few instant successes and those who attain success too quickly usually lose it. Joshua was a hardworking, faithful servant who had worked alongside Moses for decades, decades before the spotlight shifted and fell on him. Joshua's success only seemed sudden because he'd been serving in the shadow of Moses. But when Moses died, that shadow vanished. And for the first time in his life, Joshua stood before the children of Israel fully exposed. Wow. So don't be discouraged if it seems like it's taking a long time for you to step into that position that you've been dreaming of, that's been prophesied to you, or that you hope is going to come to you. If it takes a long time for you to move into a prominent position, don't be discouraged about that. If Again, if you were to closely examine the tales about instant successes, you'd find out that in most cases they weren't instant at all. <laughs> it required a lot of work, sweat, prayer, and faith in God for those people to get where they are today. They started out much in the same way you are starting out, and they had to face many of the same struggles that you're facing right now. I think this is so very important for us to keep in mind. But... Let me continue. During this time, while you're waiting to step into your dream, you need to send your roots down deep into the Word of God and get all the nourishment you can to be strengthened. Before fruit-producing trees can blossom and bear fruit, they have to send their roots down deep into the earth to find nourishment. And only after the tree has begun to draw from a continual source of nourishment below does it begin to send its limbs upward and outward. And as the tree grows, <laughs> and this is true of life, it endures heat, cold, sleet, rain, drought, and snow before it ever blossoms. But because its roots 
are tapped into a continuous source of strength. It's able to weather the seasons year after year and eventually produce fruit. And according to Psalm 1-3, listen to this. Do you ever read the book of Psalms? It's one of my favorite books. I read it regularly. But Psalm 1-3 says, if a person is rooted in God's word, I mean really rooted, drawing his nourishment from it, he is like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. So if you're currently in a position where you're wondering, how long is it going to take for me to pass the point of no return and finally step into my God-given assignment and shine there, don't waste this time. This is a God-given opportunity for you to send your roots down deep to draw all the nourishment you can so that when you need to get past the wind, the weather, and the pestilence, you can. Because I promise you, there is opposition that comes against anybody that's stepping forward to do the will of God. And I like what Colossians 2, 7 says in the New Living Bible. Listen to this amazing verse. Let your roots grow down deep into Him and draw your nourishment from Him. See that you keep on growing in the Lord and become strong and vigorous in what you've been taught. So use this period of waiting to send your roots down deep. And I have found that when you do finally step into the task God has waiting for you, your life gets really, really busy. Use the time you have now. When you get into the future and finally step into your dream and you are so, so busy, you will be grateful that you took all that earlier time to send your roots down deep. Don't waste a minute of your life. And honestly, reading from my book, you should be grateful. Say amen. You should be grateful that promotion hasn't come quickly. If it had, you may have taken that promotion without first establishing deep roots and a sure foundation. And when you began to experience the difficulties of life that inevitably come with the responsibility, you would have crumbled under the pressure. One of the saddest things I've observed is seeing talented men and women that are promoted quickly, but they don't have the character and they don't have the spiritual maturity for their new positions. Just let me ask you, have you ever heard of a celebrity who because of his or her celebrity status, they came to Christ and suddenly they're on the front pages of magazines, they're on TV programs, speaking with authority about what God has done in their life, but they're so new in the faith, they don't have the character to maintain that kind of a position. And many times they backslide. They were promoted too quickly. And one of the worst things you can do is to promote a person before they have the character for the new position. And God respects your long-awaited position so much that God's going to make sure you have the character you need to have before you get the position. I think that is really very, very important. And we're going to continue now on page 99. Listen to this. Paul himself gave his testimony about God taking time to work character into his life before he finally stepped into his calling. And he's talking about what he went through in the city of Antioch. And you remember that when Paul got saved, he disappeared for a while and Barnabas found him and brought him to the city of Antioch where he became one of the elders. And he was very unique on that team of elders. He was the most educated. He was the most theologically trained Three of the elders had no theological training whatsoever. Two of them were not even Jews. They were Gentiles. And I'm sure that when Paul sat there as an equal among them, he was an equal among equals, there must have been moments when he said, oh, what are they doing with their theology? Why am I sitting here among people making such theological mistakes? Oh, listen to their grammar. What are they doing with Greek? What are they doing with Hebrew? And he must have thought, why am I being subjected to this when I know so much more than them? But God was using those years in Antioch to teach him humility, to teach him submission to authority, how to become a part of the team. God was equipping him for everything that he needed. And if he had instantly moved into his ministry, 
he would not have had the character he needed to step into that position. And that's why Paul tells us, and this is in the book of Thessalonians, but as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which trieth our hearts. That is 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 14. But notice Paul in this verse says, we were allowed of God. What in the world does that mean? Well, it's a very strange translation in the King James Version because the word allowed is the Greek word dokimadzo. Ay, 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 this is quite a word. The word dokimadzo was historically used to depict a man who had undergone many rigorous tests and trials to determine whether or not he had enough character to be placed into a position of leadership. If he couldn't pass these character tests, that he was deemed unfit for public service and eliminated from consideration for that position. So when Paul wrote, we were allowed of God, he was saying rather than be thrust into a position of leadership real quickly after the new birth, he was put through a number of grueling character tests that proved he was finally fit for leadership in the kingdom of God. Paul was called to the ministry beyond a shadow of a doubt, but God wouldn't allow even him to move into a visible position until his character had been developed, tested, and shown to be trustworthy. And if you study the story of Paul, you find that he served in Antioch as a leader among leaders, an elder among elders for nearly a decade, a decade waiting for the spotlight to shift and to fall on him so he could be sent forth into his apostolic ministry. His promotion did not come quickly. In fact, it took nearly a decade. And during that decade, he dealt with his flesh, his pride, his strong will, and finally he was deemed fit by God to enter full-time ministry. And at the end of those years of preparation that I'm sure he wondered, will this ever end? Will I ever finally step into my ministry? We read in 1 Thessalonians 2, 4, he was allowed of God. He was tested by God and proven fit. That's really what it means to be put in trust with the ministry, with the gospel. The words to be put in trust is a Greek word that means to be put into public office, such as the office of mayor or governor. And by using this phrase, Paul was essentially saying, here it is, it took a long time, but after a series of hard trials and tests, God finally deemed me fit to be used by him in a public capacity. Now that is just amazing. And that is Paul's testimony about himself. And the Greek tense is very, very important because it really means after all the tests and trials I've already undergone, God is still, still testing me to make sure I remain fit for public ministry, which means God is continually monitoring our activities. He's monitoring our behavior. He's monitoring our character. He's monitoring how well we are to step out in faith and to do what he's asked us to do. He's watching us to see if we're ready for the next point of no return. You need to understand we're always living in a period of qualification. You had to qualify for where you are now. You have to qualify for where God wants you to go. And God is monitoring us to see if we're ready. So don't get discouraged. If it takes time for your dream to become a reality, God is never in a hurry because godly character is far more important to him than looking at our watches. Again, we tend to look at our watches and say, huh, are we ever going to get there? But God is not a clock watcher. We're talking about God. God is never concerned about time. That's what you're concerned about. God is a character watcher. That's where his eyes are fixed. So we now see that God's decision to promote Joshua into a position of prominence was not based on a quick overnight decision. 
God had been watching Joshua for many, many years, looking for faithfulness, courage, character, strong moral values, looking for faithfulness and the man who could respond right to difficult situations. And he'd been searching for someone with enough character to carry a mighty, mighty anointing. And after years and years of serving in that shadow of Moses, the moment finally came when God said, this man is ready. I've tested him. I've tried him. I can trust him. And God gave him a great, great responsibility. But during all those 40 years of serving in Moses' shadow, guess what? Joshua had been sending his roots down deep into the word of God. And my friends, that is exactly what you have to do. So don't waste this time of preparation. If you feel like you're waiting, I want to tell you, God is watching you. You might think that you're waiting on God, but the truth is God is waiting on you to see if you're ready for the assignment. There are things I wanted to do when I was a younger man, and oh, I'm so thankful God did not let me do them because I didn't have the character or the maturity to handle them. But today, I'm standing in the reality of those things many, many years later. And I've learned the quicker we look at our character and let God work in us and change us, allow God to put things into us and weed things out of us, the quicker we deal with us, the sooner we'll be ready to cross the point of no return, the no turning back, and to finally step into our promised land. And that's what awaits you. And if you think you've been waiting on God, now today you found there are very few instant successes, and the truth is God is probably waiting on you. Wow. Hey, right now my announcer is going to tell you how you can get what we're offering you today and a few more things, and then I'll be back, and I really want to pray for you. Many people know what they're supposed to do. But at times, the path to get there is like crossing the raging waters of the Jordan River at flood stage. They just don't know how to get from where they are to where they need to be. In this series, The Point of No Return, Rick takes us into the life of Joshua to learn how he stepped across the Jordan into the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And God has a fabulous future waiting for you too. But to get there, you must make a decision to pass the point of no return. In this insightful 10-part series, you'll learn God is waiting for you to take the big leap into your promised land. God doesn't choose people by accident. What to do if your assignment seems impossible? How to understand your boundaries and perimeters? The five primary reasons people fail. This faith-filled series is available in digital or physical formats starting at just $20. We're also offering the accompanying book, The Point of No Return, for $15. In his classic and updated message, Rick presents a clear, no-nonsense approach to help you prepare for and carry out each new assignment God gives you in pursuit of His purpose for your life. Don't miss these exciting offers, the series The Point of No Return and the companion book The Point of No Return. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Think you know the Christmas story? A babe in a manger three wise men, and a few lowly shepherds. But did you know that's just part of the story? In Rick Renner's timeless new book, Christmas, The Rest of the Story, Rick uncovers the stunning details of the nativity story you've never heard. Like how many wise men there could have been, how far they would have traveled, and why Herod was troubled at the news of the birth of a new king. When I was growing up, I heard the same Christmas story year after year, and I loved it. But when I got older, I found treasures in the Christmas story that no one had shared with me. That's what is in this book, and I wrote it to share with you and for you to share with those whom you love. When you call or go online right now to pre-order this book for just $35, you'll receive the timeless story of Christmas, now beautifully told in this landmark Christmas keepsake. Through its detailed watercolor illustration, Christmas, the rest of the story, invites families to explore the true meaning of Christmas as they interact with the story across the stunning hand-drawn pages. Bound in a hardcover, large format book, you'll create a family tradition that will last for generations. Great as a gift or for enhancing your own traditions, pre-order the book today, Christmas, the rest of the story, for just $35. Call now or go to renner.org to order. Don't miss this special Christmas offer.
This is Rick Renner and my friends right now, we're in the very middle of our ministry expansion project. It's three phases. Phase one was building the new studio in Moscow. You helped us do that. Thank you. Phase two was finishing the interior of the studio. You helped us do that. Thank you. Now we're in phase three, which is retiring the debt on the ministry headquarters in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Our ministry has never had debt. The reason we've been able to do what we've done is because we've never had to service debt. When we built our building in Riga, we did it cash. When we built the building in Moscow, it is amazing that we were able to do it with cash. And now we want to retire the debt on the Tulsa headquarters building so we can liberate all that money to really take the teaching of the Bible around the world. You know, it's never about buildings. It's about having an anchor where the Word of God can go forth. And in that Tulsa facility, we're taking calls from people who are literally calling us from all over the world. And from that facility, we're producing TV programs, social media, we're fulfilling orders for books and giving away thousands and thousands of different resources to people who are reaching out to us because they believe that we provide teaching they can trust. And it's very important that we retire that debt as quick as possible because it will liberate funds for the preaching of the word to the ends of the earth. And that is what we're called to do. And today I want to ask you to please continue to be a part of our giving team so we can retire the debt on the Tulsa building and then we'll be finished with the ministry expansion project. Thank you for your prayers and thank you for becoming a part of the giving team. Well, today we found out that God is not a clock watcher. He is a character watcher. He is looking at my character to see if I'm ready for the next assignment, and he is looking at your character to see if you're ready. There is no question that you're called. There's no question that God has a glorious assignment waiting for you. He's just waiting for you to get ready to step into that assignment. And if you need somebody to pray with you, about working on your character or anything that's on your heart, please call us. We're waiting for the phone to ring. Just ring our number right now. We're waiting for it. Or send us an email. And the moment we hear from you, we're going to really pray for you and join our faith with you for whatever it is that's on your heart. We really are people of prayer. But please remember that we're offering you my series called The Point of No Return, Tackling Your Next New Assignment with Courage, and common sense, it is just loaded with practical teaching and faith. It's 10 parts, and it comes with a great study guide. And we're also offering you right now my book, which is called The Point of No Return by the same title. And as I've told you, the back of the book says, Adventure Beyond Anything You've Ever Imagined Awaits You. Amen. And remember that when you become a partner with our ministry, we're going to send you two books as our way of saying welcome to the partner family. We're going to send you Denise's book, which is called The Gift of Forgiveness, and my book called Life in the Combat Zone, which is dedicated to partners. We always send these to anyone who becomes a part of our family. But Father, we thank you that you're looking at our character. So Lord, help us to focus on the right thing. Help us to not be so concerned about time and to turn our attention to our character, to obey you, to deal with our flesh, to do what we need to do, to be found fit to step into the next new assignment with courage and common sense. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're going to come back tomorrow and we're going to pick up right here. But remember, Ecclesiastes 8, for where the word of a king is, there really is power. If you enjoyed that teaching, please like, subscribe, and comment so more people can see it.